Hey guys, this is Brian Sykes with the AI Lab. Uh, welcome to another quick tutorial with Generative AI for Creative Professionals. Okay, so today I wanna to talk about bringing content to life with AI. So are you a content creator? Um, then AI needs to be a part of your creative workflow. And so here's video. Uh, so much of the AI creating that I see is around the complete solution being developed as an AI generated product and this means going from concepting to image assets to animation and while this is great for playing uh, it often leaves you with a really interesting visual that is technically not useful uh, because you simply don't sell that product that you created with AI uh, so what if you have an actual item like a line of products how can you use AI to enhance and help in that space. Uh, to give you a practical example, I did a search for a fashion clothing brand on Google. And just kind of scrolling through, here's my actual Google search. Uh, I came across this line called Me and M. And I kind of like the look of what's happening here. So let's take a look at their website. As I scroll through Me and M, um, I can see a wide range of products, some different models uh, in different settings. And so from this collection of things, uh, I actually downloaded a few of the assets that I thought were really interesting. I was looking at the ones that are more full figure, so we're seeing head to toe, uh, so we can do more with that. Now these close-ups, like this lady here in the blue with her uh, sitting, uh, it's kind of hard for the AI to know what's happening with that image. The details kind of get blurry. Uh, but when you can see more of a full composition, there's more to work from. So from these images, downloads, me and M, here are the images that I've grabbed. And you'll notice that the format that these are made in are AVIFs. And this is not a format that works currently with most of your AI platforms. And today I'm gonna to be looking at Kling.ai with its latest release 1.6. And here's a series that I actually thought was interesting. There's eight, 8B and 8C. These are all part of one collection, but I knew I couldn't use the AVIF. So I actually downloaded this file and I went into Photoshop and converted it to a PNG file. Here's our image. So with this PNG file, I'm going to go into Kling and upload this file. So you can see you can create a start in frame and a prompt. So we're going from image to video. So this is our image I just showed you. In 1.6, it does not support a end and start image. It can only work with one or the other. So with this, I'm using this simple prompt. The camera slowly zooms out as a woman walks towards us in a fashion photo shoot, 35 millimeter style. Uh, thanks to Rory Flynn for that prompt. And now I'm gonna take and show you the next steps in this. Notice a couple things. One is with 1.6 currently, motion brush is not available. This is still available in Kling 1.5. Motion brush allows us to select individual things and choose the animation that's gonna occur with that. Uh, for my settings, I left it right in the middle. Uh, between creativity and relevance, uh, and I'm choosing to stay in professional mode and five seconds. Generating count, one is fine. Uh, for camera movement, not available in 1.6. It's, it's still available in 1.5. Uh, I did not apply a negative prompt. I kept this really simple uh, because I basically want it to work from the image, and then the prompt that's asking for animation is very straightforward and simple. So I generated the prompt, and this is what I ended up getting. Okay, so a very simple five second animation, uh, but what it does is the character consistency is dead on, the product remains the same throughout this animation, and the results are pretty good. Uh, I even like that the her, her hair pulled back as it is. We don't know really what's happening, but we can see that uh, Kling assumed that there must be a ponytail, and so it has that in the back. Uh, but the details otherwise are dead on accurate with what we have to work from. So again, this is really interesting because we've gained a whole new asset working from existing assets. And this becomes a nice way to update that look. So going from this image as a stationary image, we now have this stationary image and we have a video. So this is a kind of a neat way of thinking about how AI can be integrated into your creative workflow, adding the addition of video to what we're trying to do. Okay, a couple quick things. The duration is five seconds. Uh, the finished size for this particular video is 1216 by 1696, and it's a six megabyte file. Now, when you're working with a complex website, uh, this would not be a fast load thing that you wanna have. You could compress this and reduce it and save it as a GIF if you wanted to. So there's options for what we can do with this. But again, 
This was just a quick way of using AI video to enhance existing products that you already have. Brian Sykes with the AI Lab. Hope this was helpful. Look forward to seeing what you guys create. Until next time, you guys have a blessed day.